business organizations out there. They're not really good. I mean, I'm the computer business is what I know about. I think it has to be the lowest in Cambridge. They're losing real value to their customers. Oh, yeah. They treat their workers very well. Uh, then, then, you know, they're really not abusing anybody. Well, I don't agree with that. See, I don't, I don't agree. See, but there, now you're now we're getting to it. And, uh, yeah. There. yeah. Maybe they're secretly No, they're not. Yeah. I, I, I agree with everything except the bottom line. I mean, let's take let's take a really harsh institution that we don't argue about slavery. Okay, nobody thinks slavery was good. I presume. Nevertheless, everything that you just said could be said about slavery. I mean, if you took a look at the plantation economy. There were masters who were very decent people. They treated the slaves very nicely. In fact, they were treated better than free workers, much better. Uh, they were allowed to live their family lives, you know. I mean, they didn't beat them up or anything. Uh, but it didn't matter. It was slavery. And maybe some of them, you know, gave money to the church and did all kind of decent things. Probably they did, you know, nice people. But the trouble was the institution. The institution was wrong. It doesn't matter whether you do it nicely or not nicely. People, you know, the idea that a person should be owned is just an intolerable infringement on human rights, whether the person who owns them is nice to them or not. And, uh, uh, you know, in the 19th century, it was widely recognized that the same is true of people who are rented. It's an intolerable infringement on people's rights, even if the guy who rents you is nice to you. Uh, the question is whether decisions over investment, production, distribution, what happens on the shop floor, conditions of work, all that kind of stuff, whether those decisions are, should be out of public control. Uh, you go back to the 19th century when there was a live, popular, libertarian, working class movement, and you will read in the Knights of Labor statement publications that wage slavery is not a lot different from slavery. In fact, if you bother to go back to the origins of democratic thought, you know, you really read the classics, the classics of li when people claim to be, you know, classical liberals and so on. But you go back and read this stuff, you know, like, say, Wilhelm von Humboldt, who was the inspiration of John Stuart Mill. Uh, he says the leading principle of this, you know, the great classical liberal, you know, the origin of the whole business, uh, the uh, leading principle of his thought is that human beings are born to, he said, to inquire and create, and to create under their own initiative. Any, if, if any work that a person does under outside pressure is inhuman. If a person creates something beautiful under outside orders, we may admire what he does, but we will despise what he is. Well, that's classical liberal thought. You know, They don't tell you that in the Chicago school. But that's classic any more than they tell you what Adam Smith really said, which is very different from what's claimed. Uh, but that's classical liberal thought, and it's because it was driven by you know, concepts of human rights and human dignities, which are seriously infringed by the structure of business operations, even if the guys who run it are nice guys. You can't be a nice guy in certain positions because the institution is not nice. Now, I'm not, you know, like I'm not saying let's go out and blow up Lotus, you know, sure, not not at all. I mean, yes, they're among the best ones around, but that doesn't lead us to over. I, sh I, th I think it should not lead us to overlook what's fundamentally wrong with that authoritarian structure. 